Hello, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the east of England. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on which part of the world you are looking from. But this, re this video is really for EEA citizens and Swiss nationals. And EU citizens who may have passed the deadline and they're wondering what to do or how it's going to affect them. So, um, as usual, thumb up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. You can comment if you want, you can share if you want, and you can subscribe if you want by clicking on the bell icon, and then you'll know when I upload videos. So basically, um, first, there will be those who have applied and are still waiting for a decision for the EU settlement. Now, there are over 400,000 pending applications at the moment so you know that's going to take some time so if you haven't heard anything back from your from your application whether it's a pre-settled status or settled status you don't need to worry you have residency rights you're lawfully in the country until a decision comes through so you don't have to worry about that um what else there is no register of those eligible to apply nor a register of those who have not exercised their treaty rights. Treaty rights is where you come to the country and you're supposed to be working or self-employed or you're doing something, you know, for the economy, so to speak. You're not just like dossing around. If you're not working, um, you, you might have to, I think in certain circumstances, if you're not working or you're a student, you have to buy this comprehensive sickness policy. That's, that's considered mandatory. And I don't know if it forms a part of the treaty, but that is one of the things you'll have to do. Um, so, this video applies to citizens of EEA European Economic Countries and Swiss nationals who were living in the UK before the date of Brexit, which was 31st of December 2020. Anyone who arrived after the 31st of December 2020, may have no legal status and they may be subject to immigration enforcement. Depending on the reason why they've overstayed, depending on the reason why um, they're unlawfully in the country. It could be a visitor who's overstayed, but if that's the case and you've come after Brexit, you're not going to have any of the protection under the free movement or um, any of the other legal um, protections that you might have had had you been here before the 31st, the 31st of December. Uh, pending applications or outstanding appeals, applications are protected under UK law if they applied before the deadline, which was the 30th of June. But there is a grace period for, for some um, if you've got good reasons why you missed the deadline of 28 days. And that's under the temporary protection in brackets, EU exit, close brackets, regulations 2020. Um, this legislation may also protect EEA citizens lawfully resident in the UK by virtue of the free movement law immediately before the transition period. And it only protects those whose presence in the UK was in full compliance with EU free movement law. And that excludes students and unemployed or self-sufficient or self-employed who do not have a comprehensive sickness insurance. To clarify, um, you are not lawfully in the UK if you have not exercised treaty rights, i.e. working, enrolled in a course, purchased comprehensive sickness insurance, self-employed. But generally, if you want to apply for settled or pre-settled status within the 28-day grace period, you do not need comprehensive sickness insurance if you're a qualified person. EU citizens living in UK before the 31st of December 2020 will be dealt with more leniently because of the withdrawal agreement. The withdrawal agreement provides legal protection to people affected by UK's departure from the European Union and its system of free movement laws. Um, EU citizens already lawfully resident in the UK can be granted leave to remain if they apply for it. No guarantee that they'll get it, but they do need to apply. Even though the EEA citizens and family members are allowed to use the NHS in the UK, it does not count as comprehensive sickness insurance 
for those who are not working or self-employed. If you made an application within the deadline but cannot demonstrate you have a right to reside in the UK, you could lose your residency rights, even if your application is valid. But I guess that's at the Home Office discretion. So um, I'm not quite sure how they expect how you prove you have a right to reside in the UK. Probably, you know, through GPs and banks and just a history of um, paying taxes, national insurance, that kind of thing. Um, if you have made your application, I hope you photocopied the application or printed it off so you've got a hard copy. Um, you should have screenshotted the, the part where it says um, application complete. You normally get a confirmation email to say that your application has been submitted. That can actually act as a temporary resident permit. You can actually take that with you and show employers or landlords that you have submitted your settled or pre-settled status. And what they will do then is contact the Home Office just to make sure that what you're saying is correct and it's all above board. And then, you know, if they're desperate to keep you, they'll offer you the job or they'll give you the room. So if you've missed the deadline, you can still apply. You need a good reason for missing the deadline. There'll be a 28 grace period where there's no immigration enforcement. Um, what else is there? OK, late applications. There could be no protection. Article 18 in brackets 3 of the withdrawal agreement could provide residency rights for late applications, but it depends on the view of the Home Office or the UK government. It's at their discretion. OK, so I do have people saying, oh, yeah, you can submit late applications, but if they're late, you're not going to get the same. Um, I'm not sure, quite sure what the word is. But put it this way, it would have been better if you had submitted it before. If you've got a really good reason why you haven't submitted it, then you can still get it. There's no problem. It's just that, you know, it, you might not have the same protections and you might get a little bit of slack. But hopefully everything goes through smoothly and you'll be on your way. And that's all for now. Bye bye.